<laughs> Hi, I'm Casey Lackey. I'm the owner of The People's Cake in Seattle, Washington. But today I'm coming to you from Sweetwise in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm going to demo how to do a gum paste anemone. And so we got a lot of stuff here to make flowers with. Um, some essential things you need, definitely. We're using our um, Fondex pre-colored purple fondant with some tyloids to make gum paste. We've got some dust to bring out the details of the flower. A teardrop cutter set, some brushes, tape, uh, your cell cakes board. This is probably the most important thing. You must have a cell, cell cake board to do this. Um, some gum paste ball tool set and a impression mat. And so how you start with these guys is you take your gum paste, just break off a little piece of it, work it, warm it up, start to make a longish type snake for it. You want to have a snake so that you can cover all these little grooves in the cell board. Because you need those grooves in order to insert wire into your flowers. You want I always wire all my flowers that, you know, peonies, roses, anemones, orchids, you always want to wire them because they're stronger if you wire them individually than if you try and make them all in one cutter. So and always grease your cell boards with a little bit of a white fat, Crisco vegetable shorting, something like that will work well, instead of cornstarch. And just kind of start using your rolling pin, work it into the grooves of the board, and then push it out. You really want to get in to the grooves of the board, and you know you're ready to pull it off. You'll begin to see very slightly that the ridges are different colors. They'll be a darker purple. When you get to that point, you know it's a nice, thin, delicate petal. Pull back off the edge of the board. And then, when you pull it off, you have these beautiful veins in it. And that's where you insert wire for vein flower, or for wired petals. So we're going to take this now. We've got our cutter set. Anemone petals are a little bit oblong, so these are great because you can bend them and shape them to whatever you need them to be. So I'm going to kind of just pull on it a little bit, and you can always get them back to their original shape as well. And you take it putting the pointy end of the petal down towards the bottom of the board. One, two, three. Now, anemone petals, they have between six to eight petals. They're all different, so you just kind of start with six, and if you need more, you add a few more. Be sure to wrap your gum, gum paste when you're done with it. So you can see you've got three beautiful petals. I love making anemones because they come in so many different colors that you can always find a color that will suit whatever cake you're making. So then you'll take, we've got 26 gauge um, floral wire that uh, Kathy and Sweetwise carries. It's fantastic. Dip it in a little bit of water. Eek. And pick up your petal and very gently insert the, the wire into this ridge you've made with your cell board about a quarter of an inch up so you can see about where that bends. That's as much as you need. The next step is just kind of to pinch it down and smooth it onto the wire. If your hands get stickier, you feel like you're sticking to the gum paste, just a little bit of the white fat will take care of that. Just kind of like a little smidge on your fingers. And so again, if you're not, until you get confident with this, try and work like one or two petals at a time. I can do five or six at a time without them drying out. Because when they start to dry out and set, you won't be able to, you know, put wires in or tool them or bend them or, you know, emboss them. So you kind of have to work quickly, and so until you get confident, just work with a small number of petals. So our next step, to take our veining mat, they've got it, this is the rose veining mat. So you take these guys face up, so the ridge size goes down. One, two. One firm press is all you need. And then you get these beautiful veins all the way through it, that when we dust our flower, will really pop out and make it look lifelike. And again. 
And once again, if you find your gum paste is sticking to these uh, silicone, silicone usually won't stick to anything, but if it gets a little sticky, just a little bit more uh, white fat is all you need. Grease it up. All right. So now anemone petals always curl in, sun side up. So you leave them with the ridge side is always the back. Ridge side down. Take your large metal ball tool and very gently, half on the mat, half on the petal, run around the edge of the petal, just to give it a little bit of a ridge and a little bit of a ruffle to make it look more realistic. This is also a really important step that you need to do for great flowers, is just thinning that edge. These flower petals are incredibly thin and incredibly flat, fragile and delicate, and trying to pull that off in sugar is always the key. So then our next step, I've got some drying over here. You can use spoons, you can use um, egg crate foam, anything just to dry them on. Take them, just drape them over, line the wire up, and just gently press on the wire right there to bend it to the shape of the spoon so that you'll have it cupping like this when you put it together. So go ahead and get all three of them set up like that. And you can ruffle them more or less. Anemones, some of them have really, really frilly, roughly petals, and some of them have barely any ruffle at all. So it's all a matter of personal preference with these guys. So then your next step is a, you take a center, which I've already made, and a little bit of floral tape. To activate floral tape, you stretch it out, and that will kind of activate the, uh, the sticky bits of it. And so then you take your flowers, or your petals, And you just bend them slightly. And you tape one on. Go ahead and get the next one. So you can see how I'm adding the wired petals. And because they're individually wired, you can adjust them and move them independently. And it just makes for an overall a stronger, stronger flower. They're great when you're driving and delivering cakes. Like you don't have to worry about your flowers cracking in half. They tend to be so much sturdier than all in one flowers. So I kind of tend to work in diagonals with these, so I'll put one on one side and then one on the next side. And these petals are still pretty soft. You want to let them set up and dry a little bit, if you can. And if you're worried about them losing their shape, I always hold my flowers upside down when I'm putting them together. Anything. Come here. <laughs> so you keep going, adding about it's four. I'm gonna go for seven on this one. And then once you've got all your petals on, you want to wrap all the way down to the base of the wire. The great thing about this floral tape also is it will protect the exposed wires from your cake, so you can actually insert this directly in the cake because it's got a covering on it and it's got protection, so it won't, you know, cause metal and cake to touch because that's a big no-no. Don't do it. off any extra you've got. And there you have a beautiful anemone that is ready to get dusted. And then you can take them and set them in flowers. They're great for toppers or great for all sorts of fun stuff. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit. It won't dust right now. It's too wet. Can we give it five minutes and then I can go back and dust it for you? 
All right, so I've let this dry and set up a little bit, so I'm going to go back in with a paintbrush and some African violet petal dust uh, and just kind of bring it to life a little bit. So all I do is just kind of go in from the edges, just give it a light dusting just to give it a, a second color to have to play with. And it's good thick, thin. In certain places we'll just really bring these guys to life. I tend to always paint from the edge to the center. That's by no means the only way to do it. If you get a little extra dust, a light blow will help. If you wait until these are completely firm, you can actually very gently bend the petals backwards to paint this. That's all a matter of personal preference. So just kind of keep going, get all the petals done. When I'm done with this, I'll actually put a very, very light coating of luster dust on it. I tend to use the mauve, just because anemones have slightly glossy petals. Similar to orchids. If you ever look at an orchid, orchids have, you know, they shimmer in the light, just a smidge. All right. Just using a bigger powder brush, just kind of go back in and give it a little bit of a gloss. It's very subtle, but it makes a lot of difference, especially if you have a night wedding that you're making flowers for. They'll glow and sparkle in the candlelight. And for the centers of these, we just, um, they're just pre-made black stamens and a little piece of black gum paste, just holding it together. And there you go. You have a beautiful, anemone flower, ready to go on any cake that you want. They're a great loose flower, they're wide, they take up a lot of space, and they're pretty simple and fast to make. So thanks for joining us on YouTube at the Celebrity Corner. Have fun making some really beautiful flowers, and we'll see you next time.